Hello, welcome to the Cisco CCNA course brought to you by Eduonix for exam 200-120. We're still in chapter 1 now, video 2. We're going to be looking at uh, selecting the components required to meet a given network specification. So if you've worked in IT before, you'll probably know that those that command the work of people in IT um, don't really know too much about it. That's why they hire specialists. Which means, unfortunately, when it comes to you designing or creating something from a specification, the specification is usually rather lacking, to say the least. It might even be something like, I need a network for my business. I have seen worse than that, I've seen better than that, but most of them are about the same level. And I, I need a network for my business for um, a printer or for a web server, something like that. Uh, but it's up to you, as the IT professional, to ask some questions. So this, this is probably a bit more of a realistic specification that somebody would provide you with. Hopefully, it would at least be something like this. I'd be quite worried if it wasn't. So I run a web design company. I've got about eight employees. Most of my data is hosted on the cloud, so you don't need to worry about that. Well, the first question will be, do you want to move it from the cloud? Do you want to move it in-house? And if it is in the cloud, is it connected via VPN to get to it, or, or if you have to log into a web portal, is there some way that you can access it with a VPN directly as well and make it act like a network share on your network? If it is, then that last statement of, so you don't need to worry about that, is always going to be invalid because there's always something you need to worry about with every aspect. If there's ever a portion of work that you don't need to worry about, you can guarantee that'll be the bit that doesn't work. So my business has a shop front. We get the old customer and you'll need Wi-Fi access. Okay, so how do we do that? As you go through these points, you need to start and formulate things in your head of how you can do it. Do you want to segregate that with VLANs? Do you want everything on the same network but have a log like a like a um, a login portal, one for employees and one for customers? I can tell you now, you probably want to segregate it with VLANs because if you don't, somebody sitting in your shop front or driving past or even the, the business next door, if they're on your network, they can pack it, sniff, they can see what's going on. And if any security assessors come to look at your network, they will rip it to bits because it's not very secure and you're potentially dealing with customer transactions and emails on an unencrypted public network, which I'm sure is going to be outlawed pretty soon anyway. We also have another office in the south of the country. Okay, well that's a pretty major thing. Do they need the same kind of network fit? If they do, how do you group them together? Do you uh, do it via a VPN, via a tunnel? by an IPsec tunnel between two routers, one in either office. That's probably the way you should do it. And then you use some kind of routing protocol like EIGRP and OSPF to share routes between them. So I'd like our own website to be hosted here. So again, that invalidates the previous statement. Most of my data is on the cloud. You don't need to worry about that. Well, I bet the website's in the cloud, and now they're saying they want to move it, so that is something to worry about. It means you need to have a web server in there which isn't necessarily Cisco related, but if you're going to be doing access to it and access control and packet filtering, you need to select a proper router to be sitting in front of it. Your average ADSL, a little kind of Cisco 380 router, also 830 router, would cut the mustard, but probably not enough for anything very big. So we need the usual printers, scanners, Wi-Fi access, etc. Not too much of an issue. Um, there's nothing I really have to set on switch ports for that to work. Most switches are pretty diverse in that they know exactly what you're plugging into it, whether it be a scanner or a printer, and it will do various things to the switch port um, should it need it. And it's probably a good idea to have a backup system for our servers. Again, the server side of it you're not really too interested in, but if they want a backup, you want to think about redundancy. You want to think about redundancy um, in terms of network equipment in their office and redundant links between sites and what happens if the IPsec goes down. Is there certain systems hosted at one office that you need at another? That kind of uh, that kind of issue. So these are some of the questions that you want to be asking the clients. You need to ask them about connectivity. Do they have any bandwidth requirements, or um, do they have any uh, special providers that want to put their own routers in place or in front of your routers? The product SLA. If your uh, your client is a service provider of some kind, what are their SLAs around the service that they provide? Because if, if they're guaranteeing kind of three nines uptime on something and the solution that you're going to put in is only going to provide one nine, uh, then you have a problem. 
physical access. Are you going to have physical access to the equipment to install it, or are you just doing the uh, the kind of paperwork and they're going to get somebody else? But in terms of physical access for O and M, are you going to be expected to keep that up, or are they going to do it? Power requirements. Um, bits of kits are very very thirsty when it comes to power. Do they have the infrastructure in place already to um, to cope with that? And scale. Not so much scale, but scalability. Is there anything else? in the network that could be improved on or something that they might want to upgrade in the future. And then environmental control. Uh, do, you have, do they have any air conditioned rooms you could put a server cabinet in? And in terms of rack specification, do they have to be locked? Is the room that they're going to be in locked? And who's going to have access to it should something go wrong? Tying equipment. Is there a, um, a, a badge security system? for access to the building or a CCTV system that needs a network backbone or IP backbone is that going to tie into your network it probably wouldn't be a problem but you know it's, it's good for you to know about these things from the word go especially if you if you're doing it to quite a tight budget you, you've got 24 network ports that need connectivity you've got a 24 port switch and then they say oh sorry hang on a minute we also have four key readers um, four, four readers for our front door that also need connectivity you're going to have to buy a bigger switch Data outlets, are they going to be in the office area or the public area? Do you want any kind of security on them, like um, sticky port security, sticky max security? Do the ones in the public area need to be on your office network or on a segregated public network? And roles and responsibilities of who's going to be looking after it? IP schemas and network diagrams, a very important one. Please do one. Far too many people these days run an entire network with not so much as an IP schema. It's all in their head. Not a good idea, and I think clients would definitely hold you in a much better regard if you could hand over a network and a network support document to them as well, explaining exactly what's set up. And then disaster recovery, do they need it? High availability, do they need it? And O&M. O&M is probably a big money maker when it comes to IT, uh, not just for um, bigger companies, but for smaller ones as well. If they set up a network, and even if something doesn't go wrong on the network, they still charge a company a monthly fee for operations and maintenance. It might include a reactive support or proactive support. If it's going to be reactive support, then if something dies, they'll come and fix it. If it's proactive, it's going to be monitored and it's going to have people looking at it 24-7 and hopefully they can pick things up before they become too much of an issue. So these are the things that you need to be looking at or thinking about when you talk to your clients. And then from that, you can build your own specification. Your own specification is going to be far more detailed than the one that you need to work from. And from that, you can start and build your uh, operations and maintenance document around the specification because you know, if you look at all these titles on the page here, these could all easily be titles within a document once you're finished to explain how the whole thing works. Uh, it, it's always good to, to start small to begin with and then build on it from a practical sense anyway. I know that this course is supposed to cover just the, uh, the exam for the, the CCNA, but we're also going to talk about how to use it in the real world as well, because let's face it, the ultimate goal of this is to pass the exam and get a job that requires CCNA.